in that process. That's all there is to it, really. And uh, so um, Philippians chapter 1, I love this verse because it just helps us see um, just something of God's pattern. Philippians 1 verse 1, so Paul's writing. And Paul takes these things for granted when he writes to the church at Ephesus. He, he doesn't try and explain these things. He just says these things are there. He says this, Paul and Timothy, bondservants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus. Any saints in the building today? Okay. Now, now if you maybe came out of a Roman Catholic background or whatever, whatever it might be, um, a saint is not someone who did amazing work for the Lord and then died. A saint is a dirty, rotten, scoundrel, sinner person who then put their faith in Jesus Christ. And the moment they put their faith in Jesus Christ, they became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And in that moment, you're a saint. Paul speaks to the saints in Corinth and then tells them to stop being stupid. It's true. You read through the rest of Corinthians, you would think these guys are, like, these guys are pagan people. But they're, but they're actually Christians. Have you ever met a Christian that acts like a pagan? Okay. I, don't, don't, don't say if you are one. Don't put your hand up. Just, you know, because that's, that's not true. But, um, but sometimes Christians don't act like they're meant to act, but that doesn't change who you are. You are a saint. So when Paul's writing to the, to the Ephesians, he's got some stuff to say to them. These guys aren't dead. These guys are still alive. Uh, Philippians, sorry. And um, they, there's no big shrine that's been built to them or some church named after them. These are just people who love the Lord. You and me. And he says to them, he says, to all the saints in Christ Jesus. So Paul could have been writing to the church in Margate, Freedom Gate Church, to all the saints in Freedom Gate, who are in, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Freedom Gate, with the bishops and deacons. Bishop is just another word for elder. Some of your Bibles might say bishop, some might say elder. We, we prefer to use the term elder for obvious reasons. Because if you use the word bishop, it can't for me. It conjures up some funny head, hat thing on my head and a whole bunch of robes, which is just not, just not practical in this weather. And, uh, and quite frankly, I prefer torn jeans because so, they're holy, holy jeans. But uh, the point being is, is the word bishop, that's where it actually came from. It, it took on a life of its own that moved very, very far away from Scripture. But, but it is, the word bishop, overseer, elder, it's all the same thing. It's a group of people who oversee a church, who pastor a church. And Paul, Peter would say, shepherd the flock. They're, they're a group of shepherds. And if you know anything about shepherds, shepherds were not very high up on the social scale. They were actually quite low down at the bottom. And um, they were out there in the fields getting sunburnt and uh, getting dirty and just there with the sheep. Um, and that's the picture that God has. He is our great shepherd. And then he places under shepherds to look after a church and take care of a church. And there's life in that. And then he says, so he says to all the, the, the bishops, the, the elders, and he says, and deacons. So this was a church that had elders and had deacons and had saints. What I love about it is the order. He starts with the saints. He doesn't go like, to the elders with the, bishop, uh, the, the deacons and then the saints. He, he writes the letter to the saints. Paul, Paul, Paul goes, the entire church needs this letter. We're all on an equal footing in God. The only reason why I'm standing a little bit higher is it's easier for you to see me. Okay. We're all, but actually, the way it was in the Old Testament is the person speaking sat and everyone else stood. We should actually try that. I'll sit down. You all stand. Um, but uh, I think you concentrate more this way. So, um, But the, the, what, what, where was I? Totally lost. Oh, all the equal. We're all on equal footing. We're all before the Lord. We're all, we're all this. There, no one has more value than anybody else. All of us in that carry different functions. Last year, we ran a series called Gifted. For those of you who missed it, um, as you just connect with the life of the church, you will discover and find out what your giftings are. Maybe you already know. Maybe you don't. But as you connect with people, as you are discipled, as you plug into life groups, you will find what your giftings are. And all of us need everybody's giftings. If the person sitting next to you right now is extremely gifted by God, extremely gifted. And we've got gifts that we get to use. So we've got these different giftings that result in different functions. And some people function as elders and others function as deacons. Does that make sense? That's really all there is to it. There's no, there's no, there's no, no one's higher than the other. You don't, you don't roll out the red carpet for the elder and carry his bag um, and have a big couch on stage, although sometimes that might be nice, the big couch. So I'm just right, right up there. But that's, I'm just joking for those of you looking at me way too seriously. Completely a joke. Um, 
I grew up in a church that had no pews. We grew up in church, a church with chairs. In fact, these chairs are more comfortable than the church chairs I grew up in. The first, it was a very weird thing when I stepped into a building that had pews on. It was a very strange environment, right? Um, but the more you grow in, in God, the more you discover and realize, you know, some things are just man-made stuff. And we're trying, to, we're trying to do our best to just get rid of man-made stuff. At the same time, also recognizing that God loves our idiosyncrasies as well. And some churches do things differently to other churches, and that's also okay. And everything I'm saying today, I ho- if, if it results in someone walking out of this building and then passing judgment on another church or the way they do things, you've completely missed my heart and you're completely misrepresenting God. Because we honor everybody. We honor all. We honor, we honor those who agree with us. We honor those who don't. We honor the, the government of our land. We honor everybody. All of us honor every- and we honor each other, right? That's, that's the heart. Um, and so at no point do I want anyone to leave this place and then go, yeah, the, you know, the, the David was talking about that place. No, the, if, we, if we're doing that, we've completely missed the Lord on this, right? Elders and the deacons. Elders, and we've, we've talked about that a, a little bit last year. Um, and there is very little that is said about deacons. But as I've just shown you, it doesn't mean that they didn't exist. They definitely existed because Paul wrote to them. He wrote to the saints, the, the, saints, the saints with the elders and the deacons. And um, so you might say to me, well, you know, this is, like last week was fun, Dave, and we were talking about the five loaves and the two fish, and that was really awesome, and I really enjoyed actually speaking on that last week. It was really cool, and I'm, and I'm trusting the Lord for all of us in this room that um, we're going to experience the supernatural provision of God on our lives, but we are also, as we were going after last week, we will become the solution to somebody else's problem. We'll become the solution to somebody else's impossibility. And we love that, and that's awesome, we're gonna, and, we, and we go for that. But today sounds a little bit different, like, oh, you're talking about deacons, like, oh, my word, you know, I should have stayed at home today or gone to the beach. I hope that, it, these are not things we talk about all the time, but I hope it just helps us to settle in our minds something of a structure in which the life of God can flow. Does that make sense? If you've got a human being, right, we don't talk about the skeleton very often, but your skeleton's still there. And if the skeleton's not there, everyone would know about it. Okay. If you look, walk into a beautiful building, the building is incredibly beautiful. No one really says, wow, these foundations must be amazing. Yo, they, they go down two meters here, one and a half meters of the, oh, these foundations are incredible. But if they weren't there, there wouldn't be a beautiful building to say, wow, you're a beautiful building. I actually wanted to throw a photo up. I watched a, a YouTube clip uh, last year sometime. My son loves building stuff. And we watched how the Burj Khalifa got built, the tallest building in the world. And it is absolutely amazing watching these foundations go down into this massive massive hole you can imagine that the building's like almost a kilometer high so how deep and what they had to do and the technology they needed but you know if i hadn't watched that video i would have had no idea of what those those i still had no idea afterwards but i had no idea of of how the how the foundation or what they were or how they work or whatever i would you know it doesn't even cross my mind i just go like wow that's beautiful look at the fireworks on new year's eve it's beautiful it's wow it's wonderful that's the outside the exterior the beautiful thing that god is building but there is a structure somewhere and so today is structure day. Turn to the person next to you and say, it's structure day. And so we just remember that there are structures. And I want to say this um, when it comes to deacons. We'll talk about it just now. If I forget to say this, I, I, um, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really not trying to keep to my notes today because that might, you might be like, oh my gosh, are we ever going to get there? I'm just jumping around a little bit. But the thing with deacons is this. Once we finish just talking about them in a few minutes, I would wish that every person in this building was a deacon. Like, like that, would, that would be the goal. That would be the goal. It's not like it's kept for some chosen frozen. It's, for, it's, it's actually for all of us. The Bible says that if you have a desire to be an elder, it's a good thing. So if, you're, if you desire to be an elder, that's awesome. So step into what God has called you to do. Start doing what he's called you to do. Say yes to him when he says say yes. Listen, obey, and get into the word. And start to grow in the calling of eldership on the inside. Because we need... Hundreds of elders. I know it sounds like an exaggeration. I know a church in, uh, um, that we, we love them very much up in Peter Marysburg, they have like, I don't know, 80, 80 eldership couples in their church. That's amazing. They run 40-something services every single Sunday in different places, different locations around the city. All over the place. That's just mind-blowing, the growth. And, you know, so why, why I say that is when there's a good structure in place, growth can happen. And the goal is growth. The goal is not, wow, you've got such an amazing skeleton. Wow, that, that foundation is so incredible. If we're still like, you know, if all we're seeing is foundations in five years' time, we'd have a problem, right? Okay, am I making sense? 
So just very quickly, um, so why do we have elders? Because it's God's way. Why do we have deacons? Because it's God's way. Why are there saints? Because it's God's way. Right? Um, so what are deacons? Deacons are not ushers. They're not people who straighten the chairs. Now, could they straighten the chair? Absolutely. Every single one of us in this room can straighten the chair. Every single one of us in this room can help someone to a seat, can make coffee, can, can every single one of us are part of the church family. Sometimes we've relegated a deacon to a particular, well, you're the person who unlocks the door. Um, or an elder, you're the person who goes and knocks on somebody's door and says, you haven't paid your tithe this month. <laughs> we were contemplating doing that the other day. We decided Vristi and Gerard, because they look mean, would be really cool people to go around knocking on doors, you know? <laughs> of course, I'm completely joking. <laughs> but am I? No, I'm joking. I am really joking. I really am joking. I really am completely joking. But the point is, we've got these funny ideas of these kinds of people. Somebody, when we first started to introduce the concept of, of elders a couple of years ago, somebody said to me, they, they just see these elders as these people who dress a certain way and they're the ones who go and knock on all the doors, you know? What a terrible picture of elders. They, they, they should be a little bit, the, the picture should look a little bit more like shepherds looking after sheep, protecting, caring, guarding, going the extra mile, waking up in the middle of the night when it's necessary. Praying for, for people, caring, looking after people, helping people get through their stuff. That, that's what elders do. Bring us into a place of maturity. And then the deacons, their job is they come alongside the elders. And basically what's beautiful about the deacons is that the Bible doesn't prescribe a job description. Isn't that amazing? It, it does prescribe a kind of person, but it doesn't describe a job description. So that basically gives us the freedom and the creativity within our individual space as a church and what God is doing with us as Freedom Gate to think through, well, how and where and what does it need to look like for deacons in this environment? But, but what we do know is that there, are, there is a character that is required. And that's kind of, that's, that's really where it stands. And we're going to read the only passage in Scripture that refers to deacons and who they are and what they do. And we're going to read about that now. So turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Are you all still doing okay? 1 Timothy chapter 3. I know it's hot. It feels extra hot when those curtains are closed, but I'm sure the sun is pounding in there as well. So um, 1, 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. I'm going to read verse 8. It says, likewise, deacons. So he's just given a, 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 some things about uh, elders. And then he says, likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. I love that phrase. Holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. But let these also first be tested, then let them serve as deacons, being found blameless. Likewise, their wives must be reverent, not slanderous, temperate, faithful in all things. Let deacons be the husbands of one wife. We have checked on that, by the way. Ruling their children and their own houses well, for those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. So we will go through this list. Reverent, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. Reverent, their wives must be reverent, not slanderous, temperate, faithful in all things. Husbands of one wife, ruling their children and households well. It's quite a standard, right? And when we look at that list, we don't go, oh, well, I'm just so completely disqualified. No, what it should do when we see a list like that is say, well, that's kind of how God intended us to live, right? That's, that whether you're a deacon, an elder, or, or, a, or a saint, wherever you find yourself in that, that should be how we're living. That should be the goal, is that we're all living that way. And if that's the case, we could say, well, this could be a building that's full of deacons. And that would be the heart, because as I said just now, I spoke about the hundreds of elders. Imagine hundreds of elders, hundreds of deacons. Imagine what the life of God could look like in that environment. Amen? Imagine how many churches could get planted. I believe that God has called this church to be a church planting church. And he hasn't changed his mind. Whether we planted one or not doesn't matter. He hasn't changed his mind on that. Imagine... Imagine what could happen over the next few years as we send people out to plant churches because people are saying yes to, I want to step into whatever leadership calling you've called me to, God. I want to, I want to serve in whatever way you call me to serve. I'm not just going to be a pew warmer. I'm not going to just keep a spot on my seat. I'm going to be a person who is saying yes, ongoingly to Jesus. And so I also hope as I read these things today, we don't often talk about these things, but maybe it'll stir something up on the inside of us. Say, oh, 
that's, oh, that's something I can aspire to be. I can, I can step into that thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust the law for that thing. There, that desire is a healthy thing. It's not a selfish thing. It's a healthy thing. Amen? You all still doing okay? Okay. Um, I, I, was, I was saying deacons are not ashes. They're not the police. They're not the secret police. They, what they are is they're servant leaders. When you read that list of characteristics, you see a list of servant characteristics. Now, who is the great example of a servant? Jesus. I did not come to be served, but to serve and to lay my life down as a ransom for many. That is the, the, Jesus is our great elder. Jesus is our great deacon. Jesus is also our great example of what a normal Christian looks like. The normal Christian looks like Jesus. The abnormal Christian does greater things than Jesus because Jesus said you and I can do greater things if we believe him. But Jesus said, this is, what, this is how a Christian lives. This is how you live by faith. This is how a Christian lives. This is, this is what an elder looks like. Jesus is our great shepherd. This is what a deacon looks like. Jesus is our great servant. Is that beautiful? Am I making sense? You guys all still okay? And the reward for being a deacon, I love it. The reward of those who have served well as deacons. It says that last verse I read, in verse 13, it says, They obtain for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. I want to latch on to that great boldness in the faith. There's, there's the sense in which those who have served well as deacons carry, carry within them such a boldness that grows and rises up on the inside that the gates of hell cannot prevail. That they're able to, I, I don't, it, it's, it's, it's not, the, the Bible does not say that in Acts chapter 6, when those men were chosen to go and help the, the widows with the food, that they were deacons. It doesn't say that. Some people will say that those are an example of deacons. You can read it that way if you want to. You don't have to read it that way if you don't want to. But what I do know is that those group of men had such boldness in the faith that Stephen was able to stand and defy the authorities of the day as he, sp as he preached the gospel. And he got stoned for it. But there was a great boldness in the faith that he carried. And those who serve well as deacons, there's a great boldness in the faith. And I'm trusting the Lord that what we're doing today is we release a few people into this thing called deaconing. That we'll be doing that more and more often. We won't have to necessarily go through an explanation like I'm doing this morning. But there will be an understanding because we're creating a culture within our church where we understand these things and we're growing into these things and we're not scared of these things. And we don't go, when you look at these wonderful men and women who are going to get prayed for this morning, we don't think like, oh, they're somebody special. They are absolutely somebody special. But so is the person sitting next to you. So are you. So am I. Every single one of us are absolutely special. But we celebrate when God calls people into something. We celebrate their yes and we celebrate their obedience. And then all of us say, I'm going to say yes and I'm going to be obedient. Does that make sense? You guys with me? Awesome. Uh, just quickly, my, the three functions that I would see for deacons in our church environment would be these three things. That they would be culture carriers. Culture carriers. They would be a group of people who, together with all of us, but that there, there are some people who maybe they just carry the culture, they just really, they, they hold on to this culture, and therefore the culture spreads to those around us. If, you, if you're newish in our building, and there's many faces I can see that I have not yet met, I would love to meet you. Don't leave without saying hello, please. Please come and say hello. Just interrupt whatever conversation I'm standing in. Just push through, barge, whatever. Um, but I would love to say hello to everybody. Um, that, that, that is the goal. Um, but when you stepped into this environment, maybe there's something you picked up. You went, these, let's say uh, there's such a loving environment here, or such a welcoming environment, whatever it may be. There's an atmosphere of worship. What you're picking up is the culture. I'm not talking about black or white or Afrikaans or Tosa or whatever. I'm talking about a, a kingdom culture that is being grown and developed. And different churches carry different emphases, and that's beautiful. Different families carry different emphases as well. If you go and visit someone else's family, what they're doing is not wrong. It just might be different to what your family does, right? And we all are different and we're all unique, and churches together represent who God is. But you step into this place, you might pick up something, maybe, maybe a sense in which people honor people. And one of our core values, our core cultures in this space is that we honor everyone. So when it comes to the deacons, the deacons carry these cultures really close to their hearts. They say, I'm going to live these things out. And because they're living them out, it becomes natural for all of us to step into them. Does that make sense? The second thing is that they help to relieve some of the burden of the elders in some of the, the, the things that need to get done. I want to say what it doesn't do is it doesn't abscond all of us from not doing what God has called all of us to do. Because the Bible speaks in Ephesians, it says that you are equipped for the work of the ministry. All of us are being equipped for the work of the ministry. 
But in that equipping, there are some who step into these different functions. And so when it comes to the deacon function, they get to assist and help and take off some of the burden, get to step into some situations where necessary. And the third thing is they carry some form of responsibility. There's no point in saying, I'm a deacon and I do absolutely nothing. That would just be weird, right? Um, Because we're not about titles and positions. What we're about is functioning in what God called us to function. Not about a title. You say, well, why would you call it something? Only reason is because God calls it something. Uh, you, we're just trying to stay true to what Scripture says. Otherwise, we'd call it nothing. We'd just all get on with what we get on with. But God calls it something. So there's a reason why God calls it something. And I think it produces a bit of clarity in, who is, in where the, what the foundations look like and where the skeleton is. Um, but at the end of the day, we want to see the life of God flow through this church. We want to see God do incredible things in this church. And we really, I, I believe that everyone who's in here today, you're not here by accident. God brought you here. And God put you here in this place. And you said yes to him. And who knows what, could, what it could look like as we keep saying yes to him together. Amen? Is that good? Everyone okay? Okay. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. I'm sure many of us have heard that before. And so I know for some of the folk who are going to call up to the front here, some of them say, well, I don't really feel qualified. But you know what? God's called them. And they've said yes. And so it's really an honor today to have them come up. So I'm going to ask everyone who's coming up to be released as deacons today, if you can come and stand in the front, we're going to pray for you. And then we're going to drink coffee because it's never too hot to not drink coffee. Amen? Okay. Henry Lynette, Elmery, Wayne, Stephen, with Kubis a listener. Is someone calling a listener? Someone call, okay, run. Whoever's calling a listener, you need to run so fast, like flash, like flash. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Gerard and Shirley, Fusi, Tantasa. Tantasa's next door. Hey, Fusi. Awesome. So just look at these amazing, handsome people in the front here. We've got Father Christmas over here. <laughs> we thought we'd use Wayne as our Father Christmas at the end of the year. We, 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 we're going to win him over, what? <laughs> Everyone doing all right? What do you guys think? Yeah. That was very impressive, Alyssa. Alyssa was down at the toddlers, so, or somewhere in the kids' church area, so, yeah. Wonderful. So we have Henry and Lynette, who um, I'm sure you've all got to know. I'm sure you've got to know pretty much everybody. We have Wayne. We have Stephen, Kubis and Alyssa and Elmery. And Mo, we're going to be praying for Mo as well. When she, she's in Scotland at the moment. Um, she'll be back in a few weeks' time and uh, super excited to have her part of this group as well. And she's super excited to be. She, she actually joined us in with training the other night via Zoom. Um, so from Scotland, it was, it was really fun. Um, but yeah, this, it just really is a privilege to be able to pray for you guys today and release you guys. And we've done a lot of talking as well uh, behind the scenes. And I'm super excited about what God is going to do in your lives as you step into this new space. I, I really believe that as we pray for you today, you're going to feel something different. God's going to be in your, in your communication with people, in the way you carry on doing what you're doing. Something's going to be different. Um, and I'm excited about the reward. You've stepped into something. You said, I'm, I'm, I'm saying yes to the Lord. And there is a great reward that comes with saying yes. And uh, so where do you get it? Maybe when you get to heaven. Um, no, but uh, you, you, yeah, there is, there, the, there is a great reward. And so I, um, I, we celebrate you guys. We really do. And uh, as a church, let's together just really blow wind in their sails. Can we do that? And uh, let's say yes, and let's, let's come alongside, and let's go say, I'll, I'll say yes to stepping into more and more things that God has called me to, so we can release more and more people. Amen? Awesome. I'm going to hand over to Gerard and Shirley, and then we'll see if want, we'll just go, and go with it from there. Let's pray for them. Yeah, Father, we just want to thank you, and, and Lord, this morning we want to honor um, these guys that say yes to you, Jesus. And Father, as we want to pray for them, we want to pray that you put your hand on them. Um, you know everyone by name, Jesus. And Father, we just want to thank you that we can release them into the call, Father, that they say yes to in Jesus' name. So Father, we just want to thank you and thank you, Lord, that, that, that we can just, um, the whole congregation can, can stand also um, uh, behind them and, and just lift their hands up, Father, for the task that they, are, say, yeah, that they say yes to, Father, in Jesus' name. So Lord, we just want to worship you for this in Jesus' beautiful name. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, but blessed 
is the man whose confidence is stayed on him. And I just want to release that upon every single one of you um, this morning that remain in him. Your confidence is in him. You don't have to strive. You don't have to be who you're not. And God has specifically chosen you because of who you are and what he's placed within you. And so, Father, we, we are so super excited. We are so super excited, Holy Spirit, to see what you're going to be doing through these amazing um, people and friends of ours, Lord, and just show them how to steward well. Um, may they be fall deeper in love with you as they, as they experience your word in a different level, as they experience you um, in a more deep and intimate way, Lord. So we just thank you for the giftings in each one of these amazing people. We release their giftings and their callings now in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, Father, that we are going to be a well oiled machine lord that this is we are a train that is being pulled by you and father we have many different many different areas um where we we need to touch and i just thank you lord that you are going to reach so many more um people um because of of these these amazing um children who have said yes to you i want to pray also father a um a hedge of protection around each one of them around their families around their children and I just thank you, Lord, that you've assigned your warring angels to stand God over each and every one of them. And, Father, that you will contend with them to contend with those. That, and, and you will, you, Father, you will save their children, Lord. And I just know, Father, that no weapon will, um, will prosper against them in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you and we bless them in your name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And these men and women, Lord, they come before you saying, yes, we speak life. We speak that, Lord, they will add value in this church, the church that we are building, Lord. We thank you that they said yes to you. May you guide them, lead them, and they will follow you. We thank you that you brought them, Lord, into life as you did, Lord, gave us life as people. We know that you are a great God. You will also guide them and bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, God, we just, yeah, just say we agree yes and amen to everything that has been prayed. We pray for your anointing on their lives, your blessing on their families as well, God, that uh, they'll just really experience your, your blessing, your favor, and also that they will know more and more clarity, with more and more clarity, what you're calling them to and what they're stepping into. Um, and uh, so we bless them in their leadership. We bless them in their faithfulness. And uh, we are super looking forward to all that you're going to do through their lives and in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's just celebrate Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And Father God, I want to pray for everybody in this room today. I thank you, Lord God, just for...